Hello and welcome to Glaswegian Geeks. That's a name, second show, we've actually got a name this time, so... Which means that hopefully we're going to last a very, very long time, uh, unlike some podcasts that just fall apart. Very true, very true. Uh, James, why don't you introduce what we're doing today? Well, every month of this year, me and Mario are going to go on a journey of self-discovery and moral appreciation for the things that we have today and we are doing this by going through old comic book films that appeared say between the 60s and 2003 maybe well we could still do yeah maybe 2004 because that was blade kind of three uh area you know yeah yeah we could go through that but uh, so we are going to take ourselves and hopefully you, the listeners, on a journey of us reviewing these horrible films. So and maybe you'll leave it and you'll feel like, oh my god, things aren't as bad as they seem. You know, Suicide Squad isn't the worst film ever made. Batman vs Superman isn't the best. Isn't the worst film ever made. It is. Just pointing that out. So every month we are going to release a review of one of these bad films, and today we're talking about. Captain America, released in 1990. Yeah. Um, do you have, uh, by any means, um, Mario, remember who played Captain America? Uh, Matt Salinger. If you've never heard of him, it's okay, neither have we. And um, <laughs> we don't really know what this film is about. All I know is that I'm living for Red Skull in it. Okay, we'll give you a rough breakdown of the story from what we know so red skull is oh, and there will be spoilers in this but really if you've not seen the film by now i don't think you're ever gonna oh, go no. your way to see it i think it's an experience that everybody needs to uh go through it, not all experiences are good this one certainly wasn't it was more comical than good but comical for all the wrong reasons because <laughs> Uh, in today's world of special effects and great choreography, things happen and they happen to look quite realistic. In this film, things happen in such a way that it actually moved me to tears. And as a filmmaker myself, even I'm sitting thinking, why? So the guy who plays Captain America, uh, after he goes through the, the, the super soldier transformation, ends up looking like a young Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> I thought... Uh, and, he, and he aids a president in this film who looks a lot like George Bush, I would say. Yeah, a little bit of fluff material for the president at the time, you know? There's serious presidential fluff material in this movie, and I'm all for it a wee bit, because <laughs> the president is pretty cool. Um, but we'll give you a bit of an insight on the in the story. Uh, I'll, we'll, we'll try and help each other remember it, because I'm trying to forget it as I remember it. Mind wipe, mind wipe. Yep, yep. So, uh, Captain America in this isn't seen as the scrawny young boy that we're used to, the guy that the army rejects. He's actually already in the army by the time we meet him and he's ready to leave. And he's already signed up for the Super Soldier Program, which there is... We, we don't know what the Super Soldier Program is. In the 90s, if you were watching this, you would never know what it is. You wouldn't even know that it's a Super Soldier Program. I mean, at the start, like, the, the Nazis explain that they've done it on a rat. Which and looks uh, more Hugo Weaving than anything else, let's be honest. And, um, yeah, you, you, you kind of learned that it worked on a rat, but you didn't know if it worked on a human, and then there's a, you know, a random They, they kidnap child. a little seven... Well, how, how old would you say is the little Italian boy who's supposed to be right, the well, kidnap? The right, Nazis kidnap that don't look like Nazis. Yeah, there's, some of the Nazis actually look like Russians. I don't know if maybe there's something going on there. However, um, the kidnap... The, so the, the film opens with um, these Nazis breaking in to effectively kidnap this young boy who they need to undergo the experiment. Now, if anyone knows about the Super Soldier um, programme, it is quite deadly. And... Um, you wouldn't really put a child in it, but I mean, I suppose it's probably happened somewhere in Marvel's timeline. I've, I, I'm not that knowledgeable on everything that's ever happened. Uh, but yeah, uh, they kidnap young boy. Young boy gets put into, you know, the machine, and we we hear 
terrible, terrible screams, and then in the next scene, oh, oh, wait, there, you're forgetting the good doctor actually jumps from a window, avoids being shot. We don't know how, uh, how large the jump is, but she's like hobbling at the end. So maybe she experimented on herself a wee bit first, yeah. Maybe. Yeah. So this this the the female <laughs> doctor basically takes on the role of the doctor from the Captain America that we're used to with Chris Evans, um, and when she sees them put this young boy who becomes the Red Skull into the machine, she doesn't want to do it anymore. The Nazis decide that they're going to shoot her. She jumps out of a window. We don't know how high up she is. We don't know how down to the ground she is. But she jumps out the window, lands on her feet, and then starts hobbling to a rock where she sits. Now, Nazis are chasing her, but she's just sitting there. And then maybe... Maybe... The, uh, two scenes later she appears again with the americans yeah that was the first scene was 1936 second scene 1943 mm-hmm. so she's back with the americans and she's found steve rogers who is going to naturally become captain america uh, there's no build up to this he's already signed up to it Um he said goodbye to the love of his life beatrice who is a medic in the army who is <clears throat> a lot like um Peggy Carter. Uh, there's no beating around the bush with it. Um, I mean, we're comparing it to what we know back then. They, they technically done it first. <laughs> like, you know, it's that. Um, and I, I'm sure we won't have to talk about that ever again until maybe seven minutes. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, so, yeah, you know, um, basically what happens is Steve kind of is in this experiment. We don't know what's happening. In the 90s, I wouldn't have known what was going on. In the 90s, you didn't know what was going on. you seen it when it was yep. when it was about, you know, because uh, you're old. And, um, Thanks for reminding me that. And, um, yeah, so Steve gets, you know, turned into the Captain America that we all know and love. Uh, take that very lightly. Uh, and and that's, this, this has to be the most comical bit of the film. Right? No, this, no, no. Most comical to this point. To this point. But there's a bit where, like, a Nazi has infiltrated this and finds the Doctor after Steve has been turned into Captain America and um, literally goes, which I, like, shakes her hand. And <laughs> no, go, no, 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 no. Doesn't even get to shake her hand. <laughs> he outstretches his hand to shake it and then just in a uh, swerve goes to Zeke Howe and then pulls a pistol out and shoots her point blank. And this isn't, this isn't expected. This happens in a second. This happens, this happens in literally the space of a second. And it's amazing. It's like the biggest joke you've ever seen. It's like, I'm going to shake Mario's hand. And I'm like, oh, you can't do that. Like, uh, too, too slow, man. Um, and then she gets shot and Captain America tries to save her. Can't save her. She dies. So does lots of other people. Lots of well. other people. But, you know, we, we don't know any, any, anything near enough about these people to care. And... Um, so yeah, that's quite an emotional bit. I, I suppose that was them trying, but we didn't care enough about the Doctor to care. Like, I was laughing at the whole build-up to her death. It was amazing. Uh, I'm a bad person. <laughs> and I'm going to hell. Um, but yeah, after that, um, Steve gets sent on a mission to confront the Red Skull. The Nazis are going to do the traditional bad guy thing that they're going to send a bomb to the White House and blow the White House up. And um, before before we get that far right, this happens a couple of days after, within a week of uh, of Steve Rogers becoming Captain America. He's already got a bullet in his shoulder and his chest, and they're like to this doctor, "We need him ready in five days. They're, the the Nazis are going to launch this rocket." And from from us just watching it, if it doesn't happen on screen, in my point, it doesn't happen. So we've got an inexperienced, non-military trained guy that they got just to be Captain America. No like combat, ex- live combat experience and stuff. No training whatsoever. No hand-to-hand combat. And they're just sending him just a hyped up, roided like... Well, I know he's not the character. Matt Salinger is not roided up. But in our minds, we're thinking... A big bad Captain America, like kick ass kind of guy, out in the middle of the field, no help whatsoever. Stop these Nazis! Stop the missile! Good guy. Just because they can, uh, because they've put him through this experiment, so they just expect that this experiment's going to make him the best soldier ever. 
So yeah, they they send they send Captain America out with no field experience whatsoever. They don't know what the fuck he's doing. Basically, <laughs> they're just like, oh yeah, the Nazis are going to bomb us. You need to go sort it out. And he's like, right, okay, fantastic. And as far as we're concerned, like Steve Rogers isn't the the Steve Rogers that we that we know and love. The guy who, well, I mean, the bit in the hospital when you get, when he gets told that the bomb's going to be it's launched, very patriotic. he's very like, no, no, I've got to go sort that out. I'm the only person that can. And uh, there's a bit in a plane after that. They're on a plane, and he asks, "Oh, um, when am I going to get some fresh troops in, in my, my battalion?" In my battalion. No. That's the point where the soldier says, oh, yeah, the, 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 the scientist who done this to you, basically, you know, she didn't trust anyone, so we think you're the only person of your... Good character. Of your good character and calibre. And we don't have anyone else to send. Sorry. <laughs> and, um... <laughs> no, if I'm asking for fresh troops, I don't care if they're super or not. I just want to know that I'm going to have soldiers there backing me up. You know that that that's that's what my that's what my beef is. You know, uh, so Cap goes in here with absolutely no help whatsoever, and we get to see him make a sterling demonstration with his shield, which he has not been trained in. <laughs> like, that 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 goes back to what I said. If you've not seen him use it prior, get experience using it. It never happened. So for a first time user, brilliant. Well, and I'll tell you why he's brilliant on his first time, because he sees a big guard post, a big wooden guard post, throws his shield at it, the guard post collapses, I'm in stitches, because this is amazing, <laughs> and I'm just sitting there like, this is the best thing ever. Like, <laughs> And um, then he goes on, you know, and you see him push a whole truck by himself, you know, that's pretty Captain Oh, America, it is. It? It, is it not in one of the comics he, like, lifts a tank? Like, obviously, one side to, like, lift over and shit. So. Yeah, well, he moves this truck and he uses it's it for very, cover. It's very comic because It's very to source material. So, yeah, I'm good with that. I'll get that. Uh, soon after this, he bumps into everyone's favourite melted-down Lego, the Red Skull. And um, that is exactly what he looks like, a melted-down Lego. Um, his face is all distorted and weird, which I suppose, you know, is good because of the effects of the, the Super Soldier serum and the fact that it happened to him when he was a young boy, you know. You know, this is the kind of idea. The way this film kind of makes out is that obviously the Doctor has had more years to perfect it, but I think also the reason why they've tried to justify the disfiguration of this young Italian boy, which I will get to, um, <laughs> was probably because he was younger and he was forced upon it. Like he wasn't relaxed or anything like that. He was. He didn't know what was going to happen to him, so that could have all happened. That's all fine. Now, onto the subject of the Red Skull. The Red Skull appears and he is the best thing about the film because he is cracking one-liners like it's no one's business and he's just running around thinking he's like God's gift to the universe, which to this film he is. Like he, 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 if there's anything to be saved to this film, it's him. And he just looks like a, a badly done version of Hugo Weaving, but Hugo Weaving was just a tidied up version of that. So, you know, that was that was, that was was fine, you know, I'm, to I'm me. good with that. Red Skull had character, even though it's not character I expected from Red Skull ever. Uh, one of those things being, oh, he's Italian. <laughs> and um, the Red Skull, to me, has always been German. He's always been very for the Nazis he, until, you know, obviously he gets a bit sick of them and decides that, no, the Nazis were wrong, I'm right. Um, so, I don't know why he's Italian. No idea why. There's a, a bit at the start before he gets kidnapped where he's playing a piano, which, you know, plays homage to the end of the film. When he hides a bomb in his well, piano. Let's not jump the gun. But which we'll get to. <laughs> um, We'll get to that. Uh, but the fact that he was Italian was the only annoying thing, and the fact that he was kidnapped at a young age, and, you know, apparently the Nazis never took him to Germany. Like, he was just always in Italy, which is just weird to me. Like, I just don't understand. Surely Hitler would have wanted to meet his red menace. Do you know what I mean? Like, well, you never know. Maybe, maybe. his bastard project, just like, I just keep him in Italy. <laughs> just, just, just keep him there. Keep him. He he, he he does not look like part of the master base, therefore we can't have him. Yeah, there's definitely no uh, blonde tail there. Hey! <laughs> there's definitely no <laughs> nothing there. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that was, um, that was all... That, that that's all fine and anyway on to the, the the greatest bit of comic relief in the film is Captain America fumbles because Red Skull basically kicks his cunt in oh here's the thing you can assume that Red Skull's been raised by these Nazis but then again didn't happen so we don't know for sure beats him in hand to hand combat 
brutal Captain America first mission his first mission and he's sent to stop this bomb doesn't know what kind of threats are happening and looks ahead of him gets done in and he's in a very in a very Tom and Jerry Wiley Coyote Roadrunner kind of throwback he's strapped to a fucking rocket yes he's strapped to a rocket and with like, his shield still on him he's got his shield on him so they were they had the courtesy to go Captain America we are going to kill you we're going to kill you nice and slow you're going to be strapped to a rocket you're not going to freeze when the missile goes up into the atmosphere and back down no you are going to be strapped to the rocket with your shield because Nazis care yeah and you could almost say that did Nazi come uh. I would like to take this time to <laughs> inform the listeners that I will no longer be doing podcasts with Mario um, that was that was worse than any one liner than that film. <laughs> you are officially worse than that film in one aspect. I knew it. Like, I, knew it. I knew it before we even started. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, so, comic relief. Yes, yes. He gets trapped to the rocket, and uh, the rocket's headed for the White House. It's going to blow the White House up, but it's it's going to land not on the White House. It's going to land on the head of a tiny boy who's ready to take pictures. Now, Captain America sees this boy. Let, let's let's just get into that. It's 4 a.m. He's in Washington, D.C. This is the best line in the film. Because his mum walks in and says, What are you doing still awake? Like, you should be in bed. And he's like, Mom, we're in Washington, D.C. Do you expect me to sleep? Yes, you wee dick. Like, you're, a you're a child. You're a child. Get to your bed. Exactly. Uh, uh, this young boy becomes uh, quite important to the story. Um, from what we can pick up, it's probably the closest thing to a plot device and this also, film has. And we're going... 1943 it's safe for a child to walk out in washington dc at the white house with a camera and nothing happened to him oh nothing caused by fellow americans because they're good in those days aye when was like you know where was that where was his mo- be like kidnapped and whatever <laughs> where was his mum then do you know I what know. i mean like, like oh just just go to bed she's out for the count oh i'm gonna get this camera and go well i think he pictures. was on the roof i think he was on the roof of his apartment building um <laughs> maybe which is situated which oddly is even, close which is even safer <laughs> which is oddly close to the white house i might add you know like it's fairly close um so yeah that happens uh captain america spots this child on the roof and then he'll kicks the rocket away <laughs> from the young boy like I, I i'm not even joking he heel kicks while he's strapped to the rocket he heel kicks i'll say it again <laughs> he heel kicks a missile and sends it to where mario alaska it ends up somewhere in alaska how that happened i don't know i just know that it makes me physically uncomfortable and well, ill the writers needed somewhere icy you know so that they could freeze him for 50 years you know we're yeah. better than alaska yeah yeah somewhere accessible to people yeah. in 50 years time yeah somewhere cold hmm <laughs> yes definitely yeah mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. so he ends up in alaska then we see 50 years of presidential elections through newspaper transitions and stuff in like the rise that. of this hold on what's his name tom hold on um yeah so the 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 young boy from the Tom Kimball Tom, Tom Kimball rising to the power of from councilman in his state congressman president yeah. why because America yes so it's how this young boy who Captain America saved by almost like you know not heel kicking a rocket to Alaska this young boy takes a picture of Captain America and he keeps it in his wallet until like the oh end of wait 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 you we missed the line we missed the line the line the line the day after the missile went on a tangent to Alaska mm-hmm. the little boy that took a picture Wee's pal goes oh. <laughs> it happened it really did it really happened look here's the picture I'll prove it and his best friend says this exact line because his friend says. Do you believe me? And he says... I've, I've got it right here, hold on. The exact line. Pictures don't lie, neither do best friends. And is that not the sweetest thing you've ever heard? It's beautiful. It nearly made me cry. And that young boy is never seen again. <laughs> like, no. So they were obviously not best friends when he became president. He was like, fuck, that guy's a bit <clears throat> gay for me. <laughs> um, 
but that was a uh, funny uh that was an enjoyable moment um anyway so missile gets launched to alaska we see 50 years of transitions we see this young boy become president and then captain america is found 50 years later by two people just out for a wee jog in alaska and they fight they just see like the tips of these his, his three fingers, his glove, and they think, oh, there, there must be something in there. There must be something in there. There's something no right. That's not normal So what did they do? In Alaska, they, you they know? They cut him out in a perfect rectangular block. With his hand sticking out the fucking ice. With his hand sticking out of the ice. Which is actually pretty good uh, precision, you know? They could have cut an artery. They could have just lobbed well, his they, wrist they cut, off, you they, know? They cut the block quite big. And then they put the block on the table... And then, out of nowhere, Captain America breaks free of the ice. He's not thawed out. He breaks free. Because um, America. Because, uh, you know, 1990s TV film realness. Um, the topic is 1990s television movie realness. And they just hit out with this. So, Captain America wakes up. He doesn't realise that, you know, this is all happening. The Red Skull sends his daughter, who's never named, but we think is Sin... Um, off well, to get. She is named, but it's not actually Sin. What, what, what is her name? Valentina. Valentina. I think. Yeah. That's not what... interested. I know. It's, it's it, not. It's not. We're just going to call her Sin. That's it. We're just going to call her Sin, and that's it, right? And um, so basically, she um, she gets sent to find Captain America because somehow, somewhere. You know, the Red Skull has been tipped off that Captain America... Oh, it was in a newspaper? It was in a newspaper. And uh, it should do. And uh, he sends his daughter to go find him. Now, this has got to be some of the best stuff I have ever seen. Because (laughs) two helicopters drop off three motorcyclists in the forest where Captain America is. I don't know how they've found them. They've just obviously made very good guesswork. Because he's no longer, you know, in the snowy part of Alaska. Well, here's the thing. On one of the back of the helicopters, there's a wee old... Uh, red and white mm. down Canuck land mm-hmm. so you know oh Captain America's been spotted in Alaska he's heading for America mm-hmm. he's got to go through Canada yep so he's in Canada and um, you know they're chasing him we see Captain America literally throw his shield at someone and knocks them off the bike this is where some of the best stuff comes from is the action sequences because they're over dramatic and they're some of the best acted things in the film because the acting is pish Right, absolute piss, and um, it just it just hurts me. So anyway, he's running through Alaska, blah 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 blah, and then uh, you know, oh the friend of the president, the guy with yeah, the, the glasses, that's him. He is seen again. I'm, I'm an idiot. I thought you were meaning the young version of him. I'm like, yeah, you're right. You're, no, you're no, right. I, 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 that young version is never seen again. But you know, he comes back as an old guy, and you know, best friends, and um, he goes and finds Captain America and lets Captain America in the his. President car. sends him. More importantly, the president sends his best pal. It doesn't send any military, doesn't send a helicopter, doesn't send a Humvee, doesn't send a tank or nothing. Not one camouflage motherfucker's seen. He sends his pal. Sends his best pal, and Captain America has been chased through a forest. He's getting shot at. He is, he's in a bad place. Like, and this guy just appears in like a, a bobcat truck and literally says, Oh, get in, get in! And he gets in, and maybe... 73 seconds later Captain America pretends to be ill and steals this man's car <laughs> and and by this point I'm struggling to trust Captain America right? because when he gets in this car for the first time he's like who was that chasing you and he's like Nazis you, he, no, it was he Nazis he smelled them it, they were technically because they were working for you know the the Red Skull and you know but by this point the Red Skull doesn't really feel like a Nazi at all after, like, all that, it's like he just severed his ties with them and that's it. Which he's done before, but, you know, he, he, I, I, it just felt weird to me. Uh, so he just assumes that they're Nazis, you know, fakes an illness, steals this man's car, drives off. This man suddenly finds a way to get home because uh, he's called his best pal the president and they've sorted it out. Um, and then, you know, as is Captain America goes back to, you know, his hometown where the cheesiest music is played for the scene. He runs to find his um young uh his young lover, um Beatrice. I can't remember. Bernie. Bernie. And um who is now an old woman. 
uh, very much in you know the way we've seen Peggy Carter get older. And she has a daughter called Sharon, who is played by the exact same actress. Would you care to <laughs> confirm? That- yeah, on IMDb, have a look. Bernice Stewart slash Sharon. Mm-hmm. There you go. Yes, and she plays the two characters, which is fair, right? Because they're you never know, seen. They, in, they're they, never they, they seen did in have this. The flashback kind of like, oh my god, it's a double of her. Oh my god, it, she's she's still young like me. How the fuck? Come on. In fairness, having the same actress, it works because they're never seen in the same shot because their editing budget obviously didn't cover that much. Do you want uh, to know how much her budget was? How much was... Wait, we'll, we'll save that for the end, right? Okay, We'll okay. describe it and then we'll tell people how much money was wasted on this tot. Um, so, you know, th- th- there comes a, a scene of sort of, you know, rekindling with that family and trying to, you know, figure out how it goes and things like that. And eventually... Uh, you know, the Red Skull's daughter breaks in again to, you know, seamlessly... Just ma- just as the president's pal finds Steve's former lover and gets shot in the back. Gets shot in the back. And he's, then, in, he's in, like, three scenes and, and then, he's dead. And then... Then Bernie's husband gets shot <laughs> and he then gets shot Bernie and... gets killed and, you know, it's just... All this stuff just seems to happen... Like, it just seems, oh, we need Captain America, so, you know, you know, take no prisoners. When, realistically, if they take prisoners, Captain America is going to be more entitled to listen. And this was obviously the issue with the film, because Captain America doesn't even get the chance to act like Captain America at any point. You know, the whole film kind of feels like a revenge piece by this point. (laughs) Like, they're going to get revenge. And, um... So they, you know, they it starts on this whole side quest of general nothingness, and then they eventually find out that the Red Skull is still alive, uh, and Steve has to stop him. Now, up to this point, which is the last act, because we have skipped so much, because literally everything in the middle is just <laughs> irrelevant. Like, I was on my phone through the whole middle act, because nothing was happening. Um, it's just little sort of side pickups to how they get yeah. from A to B, but there's no real, you know... Like, find, finding the uh, experiment lab where Steve became Captain America and having three guys chase him down, following him. To find the scientist who turned him into Captain America's journal. That was uh, left in this lab. Which was left in this lab. This very dusty lab. This very dusty and obviously ransacked lab. And someone just obviously didn't check that drawer where her diary was. And... Uh, that's that, sloppy handwork for America to mm-hmm. be honest let's let's be honest mm. but I don't think like he reads the journal and it kind of implies like obviously you know how it all works but it's never really mentioned again no nope. it's never brought up again so they basically go to get this journal for nothing and then off camera it's just you're just but before we jump off from that scene we are forgetting the uh, stereotypical racism of 90s TV oh well, 90s movies please continue an Asian actor that's great in hand-to-hand combat. We see everyone else shooting. This is like the first time since maybe the f- first scene of Captain America fighting the Nazis where he's hand-to-hand people using a lead pipe in a fight with Captain America. That's just a little bit of uh, stereotypical stuff there, you know, but hey, it's, it's the 90s. It's meant to be cheesy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, the film is certainly just cheese ball. Like that's the whole that's the whole thing about it. Uh, which shocks me because you know you've got this film was made in the nineties and there's two other ones that were made in seventy nine. Yeah. So, you know, like I'm ready to see. Uh, we we we'll get to them at some point, maybe next month. But uh, I think I've just had enough for this <laughs> month. I really should appreciate where these films came from. But anyway, we'll move on. Um, so yeah, you know, by the end, you know, he, he gets to the red, the red skull's fortress, which is in Italy. Again, with Italy because he's Italian. Yeah, those damn Italians. He was, he was damn Italian. Like he was so. Italian. He was like, Italian. He, slicked like, back black hair, the accent, leather gloves, suit. the suit, the 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 Italian accent. I mean, you kind of get more Italian than the accent, and um. Yeah, so basically what it turns out is that Red Skull needs the president to do something. Reasons? <laughs> Reasons, yeah, because if you've got the president, you can do anything. 
And um, yeah, that that's it. You know, he, 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 you never really find out what he's going to do to the president, but you know that he's going to do something quite menacing. I will say this about Red Skull. Red Skull in it is very menacing. And a good villain should be menacing. And that is what makes him so interesting to watch because he's got this dark sense of humour, although it's quite, you know, laid back. Like, he thinks everything's going to be okay. Uh, and you'll find that in the last act I was rooting for Red Skull because I just didn't care if Captain America won or lost. Uh, but the third act is where things get cheesy. I mean, like, you know, Captain America saves the president. Um, the president then goes on to say... Oh, pulls yeah, his own, yeah, pulls his own yeah. weight and actually helps Captain America. Distracting guys so Captain America can get the sneak up on them with a shield and... Yeah. What, what more can you want from and, a president, and, you know? Yeah, you know, he, he does his bit and the president just knows who Sharon is, even though no yeah. one has told him who Sharon is. He's not been in the same cell. I'm sure he would have freed her. If her her cell tried. was under his. Yep. Like, literally right under his. There would have been no reason for him to like, know. Like, the way he said it, they've got Sharon. It's not like, they've got uh, some chick called Sharon. Aye. It's like, oh, I, totally, like... I totally know who she is. <laughs> and um, um, yeah, because he's probably slept with her. Um, maybe <laughs> I don't know. Um, so yeah, they 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 go on. They save Sharon. Sharon eventually decides to hold her own. You know, she she does her bit. Like, uh, but you know, she's she's so Sharon's basically fighting Red Skull's daughter. The president is helping Cap fight Red Skull, but the president is mainly fighting Red Skull's men. <laughs> And there's, a, there's just a bit that's so Captain America, Steve Rogers, when the president throws Captain America his shield. And there's a whole... that that It literally is just, like, three whole seconds of a close-up of Captain America giving the thumbs up and saying, the thanks, Mr. President. It's just like, not the time, love. You're busy. Like, you know, it's it, it, it's just it's just there for genuine... Oh, they're friends. Um, so Red... Skull runs away, you know, um, starts to shoot Captain America's shield, which is beyond me because why you wouldn't shoot Captain America in the legs just confuses me. Um, it, it's happened so many times in the last act. Uh, so I'm, many villains shooting off the shield. Like, here's something. Shoot his fucking kneecaps. What's he going to do? He's going to be crawling. Then what's he going to do? Fuck all. You shoot him in the fucking head. Yep, exactly. Like, you know, th- these are how this is how it goes. And... While Red Skull looks a lot like Hammerhead from the Spider-Man comics, he still... You actually said it right when we were watching it. Jigsaw. Yeah, he looked like from Jigsaw the Punisher the, movie. the Punisher Warzone, uh, which was odd <laughs> to see, but, you know, yeah, he, he, he gets it across. Uh, so you've got, like, this last act where Captain America basically chases the Red Skull into a corner, but the Red Skull, you know, has got a bomb and some randomly placed piano. Like, yeah, that's it. Here, here's the... Let, let's talk... Practi- what? Let's, let's talk practicality, okay? Right, okay? He's got a fucking throne in a courtyard. See if that rings? That fucking antique fucking chair is ruined. It didn't See, look like an antique. It looked like he built it himself and he's well, like... Well, you, you never know. See that piano? How are they going to fucking move that inside? It's, well, maybe it's, it's not, on just well, a platform. Look, you've got they to, would have to carry it up there. See if it rains. That thing is ruined he's just spunked away money because he couldn't be bothered putting a little hood over the top of it you know i can't believe i'm ready to defend this film but it's all about the art right if i'm gonna play a piano right it's gonna be with a beautiful view of the ocean it's gonna have everything i need now granted i wouldn't play it if it's a bit windy but you know it's he's very close to the edge and it's just there it's a nod to the first act when he was playing the piano he obviously is a connoisseur of music and he loves that and he's very good at the piano. However, within the piano is a bomb. <laughs> like, <laughs> a nuclear bomb, by chance. Uh, which, you know, he's going to set off and, you know, use to kill everyone within the radius. Just because he wants to kill Captain America. Because reasons. Like, he's no reason to hate Captain America. Like, that's the thing. Red Skull in the comics and in the film hates Captain America. Because Captain America is a nuisance. Like, no, it's, it's more, he said, one running whim. All he knows is, I was raised by Nazis. You were raised by Americans. We're enemies for over 50 years, but we've... we've I was raised by Nazis, but my whole family were killed in Italy. And I was taken by Nazis. 
I'm pretty sure as you get older, you would really despise the Nazis. You know, there's a there's there's this kind of thing with morality in it. And the Red Skull and the films that we're used to, like the first Avenger, um, Cap, uh, the Red Skull, it does have an ulterior motive to the Nazis. Like he thinks they're outdated, and he feels that they're not going to do what they've got to do to get the job done. And uh, that's what makes the Red Skull interesting because he always had this plan that he was going to be bigger. And he always has been like that. He's always deemed himself... Well, the Nazis thought they, that they were the best race in humanity. Red Skull thinks he's the best thing on the planet. You know, I mean, that's the thing about him. He thinks he's superior. And um, you don't get that in this film at all. Like, he's just... It just feels like, by the second and third act, he is just, like, a criminal mastermind. And there's no real threat with him. Uh, but when he's, you know, he's threatening to blow the, the, the castle up with Captain America. Oh, no, no, the s- south of Europe. That's what he said. About 70 million folk would go off with this little bomb that he's got. Yeah. 70 million. That yeah. That's heinous. That's, that's that's heinous, but there's really nothing. Like, like I mean, why? It, it's, why? It's, it's, it's the typical villainous last resort. You know what I mean? It's like, that's that's like the sort of plan when your original plan has failed. You know, that's that. But his original plan never failed because it didn't seem like he had an original plan to begin with. Like, there's... He doesn't do Kidnap- anything. He kidnapped the president. Yeah, that was part for of a point. reason that's for a reason that's never explained. And um, so that's that's that. And then obviously Captain America stops him in the best possible way, because when Captain America dishes his shield at him, Red Skull doesn't exactly fall to the ground. He sort of trips. Like if it was like you know, it just trips and he falls and. He falls off every single rock on the the cliffside of his big fort, basically, and it's almost something like a, like a slapstick comedy when you see a cartoon character get pushed down a flight yeah. of stairs and you see them bounce off every single stair. And I don't know, part of me loved that. It was just, it was just after you know that you know hour and 20 minutes of sheer garbage that was my reward and do you know something i wouldn't take it back for anything <laughs> because it was too good uh what can i say it was shit <laughs> and it just ends there's no actual ending and there's a, a little where are they now segment at the end of it which actually breaks my soul it just tells you what happens like with the president and stuff like that uh and fictional things that's not relevant uh, just for anybody who's watching this who wants to oh films. wait there we forgot the costume you oh, know we'll you... get we'll get to that we've explained the story so now we're going to talk about things around the story oh man and the costume being one of them the costume is terrible <laughs> like do, it, do, do, you, you describe it better than me it's almost as if someone got a balloon poked some holes out and then just kind of stretched it it looks poorly made I'm, pr- I'm pretty sure the person who made it probably spent a lot of time making it, so well done for something. Well done for making an effort. Oh, and the, the, the... Yeah, that's what I'm getting on. You know how 90s, well, 89 Batman, when Michael Keaton had a uh, moulded body chest and six-pack, you know, because why make the guy work for the role, you know? Just give him the role. Fucking Captain America's wearing a red and white fucking girdle. With muscles imprinted yeah. on it. And it, it's not like it's a girdle that's attached to the suit. It's a separate part of the suit that clips on. Like, you see it move around, like, and it's like, it's literally like... It looks as if he's a part of a burlesque act. It looks like sponge. It looks like it was made of sponge. And that... Uh, and it, 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 I just feel like he would just take it off, like... Da, na, na, na. <laughs> that's why I say that, mate. And then just take the whole suit off. And Aye. then, even then, I would still be repulsed. <laughs> Um, o- overall, there are loads of things wrong with this film. But I mean, I suppose the in the acting 90s, is very flat. Come on, the acting is terrible. The acting is horrible. Like no one should have been paid for this. I would. If somebody said this film was made voluntarily, I would have more respect for it. Because <laughs> there's serious, serious effort there, but just executed so badly. Uh, but I mean, this is a this is a journey of you know respecting what's came before and as hard as we find it to respect things that came before this was made in the 90s right you know this was made what after the the hulk tv series yeah yeah Yeah. so you know you i mean i mean you remember the hulk tv series 
but you remember how bad that was. But I actually don't think it was that bad. I'm probably if I were to watch it now, I would just laugh at it. But then again, I. I, I mean, this before we recorded, I'd said I remembered specifically how I've watched it the first time. It was on BBC One late at night. Are you being My serious? Dad, it was actually on BBC One. Yeah, it was on BBC One when there was four channels, not your five. And there was four channels shown on at night and my dad recorded it for me so I could watch the next day. And on VCR. Yeah. On VCR, off they were the days. So, like, it, it is a throwback, but watching it again... I really must have mind wiped myself to like get rid of that when the new well when the current Captain America movie came came out the first Avenger because I like it just there's there's no words to describe how shocked I was watching it again and how funny it was like I could I could remember the rocket part onwards but that first ten minutes was just gone from my mind. I couldn't honestly remember anything of it. Well, as this is a, a sort of journey over the next 12 months... Um, of Torturous watching, journey. Of watching these films, we need to sit and we need to say to ourselves, this was the films that were the platform for what kind of we have now. You know, the, the MCU and the, the DCCU, which, you know, has its own issues, do you know what I mean? And, like, people say Marvel's too repetitive and people say DC's just not finding their feet. And this is the thing. How do you find the happy medium between that? How, like, Marvel have a formula that clearly works and people like. But DC have a formula that seems to change between every film and then producers get involved and things just get moulded and changed. And, for want of a better word, shafted, right? So, you know, people want this happy middle ground, but people don't know what that happy middle ground is you know what i mean like superhero films are always going to have this level of cheesiness to them this was too cheesy but in the 90s in the 90s when you didn't have like you know the avengers and you know uh, batman and you know all those kind of things do you sit and you say to yourself do you know something i'm happy <laughs> a wee bit with what we've got because what we've got is still entertaining to a degree and when you watch that because you're going to watch 12 of these over the next year how how do you personally feel like i feel like stabbing my eyes out and filling my ears with like i don't know cement or something you enjoyed it a wee bit but didn't you it was it was good to rem- like to relive something i'd watched years ago and I, like you said at the time you didn't have much going in the way of comics you had your batman stuff going on it's your Hulk TV series and stuff. So for something like that, yeah, it, it, I probably enjoyed it more as a child than I did just there. <laughs> you can't, uh, I don't think, it's, I mean, I'm sure there's people out there that do enjoy it. There, there has to be. You know, there's people out there that obviously might love this film. And we'll get Matt so Salinger many. getting a wee royalty check every time somebody buys a DVD. <sighs> What, when you can buy it for a pound at the pound shop? Right? Aye, probably, aye. You can buy all three of them out at the pound shop for a pound, like... Well, I mean, this is it. I mean, you know, it's a horrible film. It's god-awful film. Like, you can tell that it's it's been it's not been made to be a feature. It is a TV movie. To, uh, to me, it feels well, like a TV movie. If, if somebody told me that was shown in a cinema, I would be so upset. Like, you Well, know, on IMDb, right... How how much do you think was spent to make that? Nineteen ninety money, you know, like so you you'll need to scale it back a bit. Like I'm pretty sure, I'm going to Captain say, America: First Avenger was maybe around one hundred and fifty million mark. I'm going to I'm going to scale right back based okay. on what I've seen. Okay, I'm going to say I wouldn't even be surprised if it was made on seventy five thousand. If it was made on seventy five thousand, I'd be happy with it. Uh, so that's in the M, that's M, M higher M in, way higher in the millions I'll, I'll give you two more tries okay is it in the millions I'm not saying anything I need a hint no no can I can I get you know estimated zeros well it's estimated on IMDB it's estimated it's not yeah, an actual it's not budget. an actual an actual like penny figure right okay I'll, I'll aim much higher how about 475,000 higher Am I am I hot or, or am I cold? You're 
fucking freezing like Captain America in that scene. One point two mil. Estimated ten million dollars. Get yourself to fuck. Estimated ten million dollars. Where did that money go? I didn't see a film for ten million dollars. I could make a better film. <laughs> Estimated ten million dollars. Oh, that's utter bullshit. There's no way. Ten million American dollars. Where to did make all that... that go? Because it wasn't even there. They were like literally. You're forgetting all the Porsches that were bought. You know they probably punted them. Maybe a wee executive producer just went, "Oh, I'll I'll take that off your hands for you. Oh, you won't need that again." You know that wee fee on its own probably set them back a fair bit. You're forgetting the special effects. What special effects? That rat that was red skulled up. That probably spent at least two grand. Okay, that spent about two grand, James. Two grand, right? Back then, people were not making... People were making good money in film. People were making great money in film. But they weren't making money to that degree. That film was not made on 10 million. That estimate has to be wrong. And I'm going to look up somebody who's still alive (laughs) to get the actual estimate. Because I'm telling you, that film isn't even worth 75,000 that I guessed first. Right? It doesn't even look like 75,000 went into it. Like, no. (laughs) Like, no. And the fact that... If it was a TV movie and it wasn't a feature film that was in cinema, why would they spend ten million on that? I've no clue. But uh, to put it in perspective, okay, ten million on Captain America, nineteen eighty nine Batman, estimated thirty five million dollars. Now looking at that in comparison, a hell of a lot of fucking money went into Batman. Yeah, but. Oh, it's it's just it's the special effects special effects are what consumes a lot of your budget you know do you know it costs near enough a million dollars for them to do the Hulk in a film where the Hulk is in yeah just to, just to, a whole mill for that and that's what special effects are they cost a lot of money to look good and to look authentic there was nothing in that film that looked good and authentic even Captain America's Red, Red Skull's costume. mask that that probably costs. Well, that I don't that even probably costs a good bit of money. I mean, I think that that okay. I'll, I, I grant you that in prosthetic because that, that was prosthetic. There was no way that was a mask. That was actual prosthetic. So I'll give you that. However, that prosthetic is only used in two parts of the film. Not even two parts. Not even it was, that. It was, it was one scene. The rest is like his face, it, but it's, it's made to it's look like the skin is covered in the face. So that takes considerably less. So. Right now, I'd, if, if I was a producer and, I'd, and, I, and I had, you know, overwatched that 10 million being spent, I would not be pleased with that product. Right, you know, like, I'm just not. Anyway, sorry, journey of self-appreciation and appreciating the art. Um, the film is terrible. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's not worth 10 million. And I, and, I'm, and I can't even see it being anywhere near 10 million that was spent on that. I think... Uh... Do you know well, what that well, is? Well, here's here's the thing. Are, on that budget, would that maybe be counting in advertising for it as well? That's what I'm maybe thinking. Maybe, maybe. I okay. I'll grant you that. I'll grant you all of those factors, right? Because advertising, special effects, blah 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 blah. But even then, do you know what I mean? Like advertising, yeah, advertising does cost a lot. But for a, because you you're saying that it was obviously you you are under the impression that it was a TV special. I think it might actually be a proper movie. If it was a proper movie, then I can see where a lot of the advertising was paid for. But even then, I don't even think it was well advertised. It doesn't look like a film that's well advertised. It doesn't look like a proper action movie. It looks very low budget. Like in comparison to Batman, I would be offended. I would, I would be offending students by saying that that looks like a student <laughs> film on no budget. <laughs> But I mean, realistically, I've seen student films that can blow you out of the water, you know, like, that are, are so much better than that. And, you know, I, I've seen very long student films that are better than that with no budget. I think, to me, the film just got maybe a wee bit too overambitious. And, but the, there just wasn't enough of what you wanted to see. And that's why the film, to me, just, I just don't like it. However, again... It makes me appreciate just a little bit better of what I have today. 
I am living a better life than as a cinema goer than someone in the nineties was. But again, maybe you know in the nineties that was that was what people had, and you know that probably blew people away in the nineties, probably. But I mean, maybe not when you've had like you know Escape from New York and Escape from LA, which were yeah. done before that, which were much better. You know, like so things like that. Um, and for the most part, in terms of cast and stuff like that, very minimal. Not there, many there in terms wasn't of wasn't many big names, to be honest. Not many big names, not many main cast members that were, or supporting cast that were relevant, and not many extras. Well, well that's the thing. You look at the full cast on IMDb, it's not a great list. Uh, you do have Ronnie Cox as the president, who you will also remember, who at the time was in Robocop 1. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He was a he was a big bad, the big bad CEO. Yeah. So, the, you could say that that's the biggest name attached to this movie. Yeah. Which and he has, is and quite he, shocking. And, and he has one of the, the better characters in it. So, I grant it that. Overall, though, I would say that, you know, the, the film obviously had an idea of what it was wanting to do, but it didn't really stick to the source material that much. And Stanley produced it. Like, he was an executive producer on it, so, you know, he has a say, kind of, in terms of, like, if, if you know, DC's anything to go by, you know, the producers kind of have an idea and a say in what is going to be happening, what money's going to be spent where, and Stanley obviously knew this script before, like, okaying it, and before producing it, I mean, Stanley just attaches his name to anything that's Marvel related, like, he just does. And it's nice to see that even in the fucking nineties he was doing it. And but wasn't this a point of time when it was selling off the to help keep Marvel afloat? No, was it? Sorry, it was the two thousand late nineties and the two thousands round the, mm. just before Spider Man, I believe. Marvel were like near enough bankrupt, so obviously at that time they could see like, well, here's another medium we can go down, like comics. Like we've got that lined up done maybe not too bad with the Hulk show so maybe branch out into movies you know it's <laughs> safe to say it, it didn't really pan out at the time yeah I mean I think I think in terms of like a film like this needs to have genuine action that keeps it going with a genuine story and it tried to have a genuine story but it just didn't do it like the story just you know there's, there's points where you can literally phase out and be back and go hey I know what's going on and that's that's not what a, a good film does. A good film engages you and keeps your attention for the whole time. To me, anyway. So, I mean, I just think overall the film's just a bit nah. So, eh, it's it, it was... Out of five, I would definitely say... A, th- a two. Nah. And that's been generous. I mean, I would say five slashes across the wrist. <laughs> but out of ten... Um, but you know it's it's it is what it is for the nineties. I suppose you know that was that was good. But I mean, I've seen films that were made before the nineties that are much better. Oh yeah, like Mad Max. You know, Aliens, Aliens, Escape films. You know, those are all action films, and yeah, they all have different concepts. But those concepts are much bigger than superhero movie concepts. Do you know what I mean? Like Mad Max. In a, in a massive wasteland, you know, you've got these characters who you're not always introduced to, but you know they're menacing, you know they're villainous. And I think with this, what messed it up was just that they tried to keep the cheesy comic book theme, which sometimes doesn't work, because comic books right now have went into the realm of being serious, with, you know, the occasional one-liner that's quite cheesy, but yeah. you enjoy it because it's just a wee throwback and it's nice. Um, But yeah, I mean, overall, I would say the film wasn't really my cup of tea. I'm I'm not ready to do the other ones. Yeah, but well, want to know something? You just have to man up. We'll man up. We'll man up. Um, so next time we'll be doing. Pick it up. Read the title. <laughs> Read the title, James. Next time, uh, we will be reviewing Captain America: Sentinel of Liberty, which was made in 1979, and we will also be reviewing. Captain America 2, Death Too Soon, also made and released in 1979. Two films which serve as prequel and sequel to each other um, that were made and released in the same year, which hurts me a bit. High hopes. 
<laughs> high <laughs> hopes indeed. I mean, I'm looking at it and I'm just uh, no. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's we're we're going on a dark journey. Okay, we didn't say it was going to be easy. We hope you'll take it with us and appreciate what just what you've got. You spoiled bastards. If you don't go back and watch this, you're doing the current Marvel movies a disservice. Yes, I would say so. Anyway. And don't Suffer worry, we're, we're, we're not going to be Please. we're not going to be Marvel dominated. I'm sure there's a few DC bad boys that we can of dig course, up. Of course, of course. Because you Superman know. three, <sighs> Superman four. Yeah, there was a fourth one. Shut up, Mario. <laughs> not the time. Not the time. But yeah, we hope you, that you go on this journey with us, and you know, maybe maybe it helps you just appreciate the, you know, what is you know what what is out there to us now, and that it's done better and it quite clearly is if that's anything to go by so yeah until next time this is a glaswegian geeks signing off <laughs> 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 <laughs>